here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today I am here with a video to try and answer some of your questions about sewing in ends because it's something that I say oh you know and now you sew in your ends or I'm going to sew in my ends but I don't actually show it very often in the video because it's time consuming and I am assuming that you know how to do it but I think I might be assuming wrong because in the Facebook group I've had quite a few people asking me yes but how do I do it do I do it like this do I do it like that what does that mean how do you crochet over the ends how do you sew them in how do you wiggle them in or whatever people uh, are, are calling it so um, in the previous videos I have made a poncho where you start with squares and then you make your neck and then you make your poncho so um, I'm going to refer obviously you to those videos sort of around here okay uh, because obviously that's not what this video is about but what I made there was this piece here and it's not <laughs> it's not the color combination that I would usually use uh, in fact this is quite painful on my eyes but I didn't sew in the ends because I wasn't going to keep this as it is right now uh, because I'm only doing this for you know for example for the demonstration purposes I had made a proper poncho uh, for you know picture purposes <laughs> and for wearing of course so I am going to show you how to get rid of some of these ends here now the main thing is the goal that I want to show you is how to get rid of the ends so that a they are well hidden and secure they're not going to come undone b they are hidden and you don't see them so you can you know there is a way of seeing them so I will show you how to do that and c yes this is this bit of crochet but it you know it counts for every piece of crochet whether you're doing a blanket whether you're doing lines whether you're doing squares like here uh, whether you're finishing those squares you know it's the same principle for everything so what you need when you are actually sewing in your ends are needles so these were the needles that I have used up to now they are sharp sewing needles with quite I don't know whether I can show you properly with quite big holes as you can see so we have got quite a wide or a thick strand to go through them and I can still get my strand through these needles here so that works really well they also because they have a sharp point will it sharpen I think um, I can go through the strands and through the stitches as well so that helps for securing your yarn so these are the ones I have been using for a long time and which I am still using to be honest these are some um, sewing in needles darning needles from higher higher you know the brand that I use uh, the hooks from and these are the ones that I'm selling on my website and I have to say look at the eye here look how big those eyes are and they have a little sort of nick here which is quite helpful I've been using them for a while now because that's now why I wanted to do this video because I have used these these were new to me and I have to say it you know they're really good they are blunt so they don't go through the stitches and through the yarn the same way as these ones do but because these are much easier to thread and also these ones here are fine when you're doing up to DK but once you get into um, you know Aaron or Chunky you can't get anything through here but these ones will still work perfectly so this is what you will need for darning in your ends but of course also scissors for then eventually cutting them off but only as long you know leave them as long as you can and what you also need for darning in your ends is your hook <laughs> this might sound surprising but you can crochet over your ends now there are a couple of conditions to that mind you because not always can you do that so let's start with me showing you how to crochet over your ends 
and I have been doing that here. So here is an end sticking out, you see. If I pull it, can you see where it's coming from? So it starts here. So if I actually pull it, can you see that it's moving? Now, can you see that it's laying there? So I'm going to undo it because obviously this is the video where I'm going to show you where, how I'm doing this. So look, can you see that something is changing in those stitches? Can you see that? So yes, you can crochet over your ends, but you have to think about it if there are two different colors, okay? So let me just show you what to do. So you're working on your blanket and you're just going to be changing colors, whatever project it is that you're doing and whatever color you're going to be doing now, okay? But you have finished your line right here, okay? So I do tend to, if I am in this situation and I am, um, you know, sort of in a row like this, if it's at the end of the blanket, I do tend to just leave them hanging out. If I'm working a square or it's a round like this, then you go in one or two stitches in front and then you start doing the stitches as prescribed in the blanket and then this one here, you're going to lay it across like that and then you keep on doing your stitches. Where am I here? And then that way you are going to crochet over your end. And doing this in this color here, I'm just going to continue crocheting in this color here will work better than what we did just now, where I crocheted over the blue one in the yellow. And so this one here now, I've crocheted over the yellow one with blue and the yellow one is laying on top of the yellow here. So it's not that obvious, you see. Well, on the other hand, if I now was to lay this on top of there and then crochet over that, let's do that. Let me just turn around and show you. So I'm just going to start crocheting and I'm going to crochet over my yellow end. Right. Look, you are going to see the yellow in there. And this is what we are trying to avoid. So if you do decide to do this, you can do it when you're like this. So it's not going to be obvious that there is an extra strand of yellow there. But if you've changed color and you've got to lay your yellow in the blue, then you are going to see it. So look, I can pull this out and then it's gone, see? So it's not, to me personally, it's not worth doing that because I will keep on seeing those other colors. Okay. So that was crocheting over your ends. Now, let me show you how to thread on your needle so we can weave in the ends. I've got my needle here and with the pointy bit, I'm going to put that like so, and I'm going to lay my yarn over, then, Put your two fingers like this over the yarn and pull out your needle. Now you have, can you see that? Is it going to focus on that? Look at that. You're going to put the opening of your needle over that little bit and wiggle like this. Look. And your yarn is threaded onto your needle like so. Then you're going to go into your work of the same color and what I try and do is just go in make small short stitches coming back and round so I've come out there I'm going now round this little strand here to go further along so I'm always looping round as you can see, but I am also staying where there are stitches. I am not going to try, I'm not going to go across here because that's a natural hole and I'm not going to try and fill that up. 
So again, just coming back a little bit and moving on like so. Now, I am not going to go into the blue because, and I'm doing it really badly now, or trying to do it well, because look, you are going to see if you're going to go into another colour. So there's no point in trying to hide your weave in a different colour because you're going to see it. You might not see it yet. Yeah, look here, it's even visible on the other side. OK, so try and stay within the colour and try and make sure that you don't see it. So I can't tell, look here in the yellow, I cannot tell where I woven it in, but I can tell in the blue. So if you're doing lines, if you're doing, you know, any, any project, stay within the colour. Now, another thing I want to say, keep your ends quite long. Okay, as you can see, this is quite long that I've left it. And let me just measure this for you. Because some people cut their ends so short, it is then almost impossible to sew it in, to get it on your needle and to do your movement. Let me just measure. Five inches about 14 15 centimeters right so um there's no point in leaving ends like this because you know they're just not easy to work with of course you are going to have those ends at some point because you might have run out of yarn or you might have just cut wrong or whatever or you might have cut them that size so this size is like impossible to work with but it can be done. Let me show you. What you're going to do first is weave in your needle. Okay, so I've woven in my needle nearly the whole length and I've got my hole here. Then you take your yarn, you put it over the eye like so, making that same thing as I did before, the little thing between the fingers and you put it on and then you pull the needle through i always hold it at the start because now you're pulling much harder than than the other time when you have a long end there you go and it's sewn in now here as you can see i have taken these along that's why they're already a little bit shorter so they've come from here so generally i i would cut them off but what you do when you are crocheting over them, you don't do those little loops that I normally do. And so I'm never too sure about that. But like I said, I did these because then they were away for the demonstration. And that was a good thing. But generally, I, if I don't have to necessarily, I don't crochet over my ends because, um, you know, it's much neater, much more secure to actually sew them in. So then we have these needles here, which I've just started using not so long ago, and I'm getting really um, used to them. I'm happy using them. So they're easy to thread because they have a big hole, but they are blunt. So you're not going to be able to go through stitches as easily as with the sharp ones. So what I tend to do is just pick up whole strands like this. See, and then I bring through the yarn and I go round it and then I go on like so. Come back and move on a couple of stitches. That's fine. And then do a revolution round that last strand and then move on again. And I tend to find strands that lie in the same direction. But what I also do is change direction. So now I might go down. There we go. But of course, you have to stay within the colour. So now I'll continue on, on this side a little bit. And then I will go up again. There we go. Now, 
try and do this for as long as you can. The further you sew it in and the more, you know, ch changes of direction, the sturdier it will be sewn in. So you're crocheting and all of a sudden what happens is that there's a knot. So this is a factory knot. And in fact, you know, their yarn ends at one point. So they just attach a second strand and it's attached like this. It's a little fuzzy knot. And what do you do? So there's some people who say, oh, I just crochet over it. But if this does come undone, then there's nothing to work with to sew in or to repair. So generally, I always undo whatever I was doing, or a bit more, in fact. And I take this and I go about 10 centimeters further along and I make my own knot. This is the type of knot I always use, so I know that this works and I leave this hanging out. So then I continue crocheting and this is also what I do when I actually um, tie on a second strand I just tie it on like that in a double knot and then I have the two ends hanging out and then I crochet along I crochet over it so to speak but I make sure that I do it in such a way that my ends here are just hanging out there and then I keep crocheting and then obviously when it's time to sew in all the ends I will sew in the ends. So this will just be hanging out and that's fine and now you've got two long ends that you can, I'll cut this off here normally and I'll sew them in as I've shown you. But what I just wanted to show you was, okay yes ultimately I have made this not myself because you know, it would take me ages to find a um, ball with this in because it doesn't happen that very often. But if you were to pull this, okay, let me just pull this really, look, it's come undone. So I do not trust this kind of knot. Maybe the ones in the factory that are made are a little bit tighter than this. But even so, if this comes undone and you have nothing there, you just crocheted over it and it came undone, then you have nothing to work with to sew in. So at least now I have these two ends that I'm going to be sewing in. So this here is a knot that I use all the time. So the two strands held together to do the knot. And now I am going to sew in the ends. And they are quite long, so I have got something to work with and they'll be worked away quite far in and it should be fine. So I don't trust the factory knots, nor do I trust the magic knot or the Russian uh, knot, whatever it is that they uh, are called. So I always work with two ends that need sewing in. Now, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any other tips or tricks that you do, do please leave me a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!